Last year at around this time, football Twitter was busy writing off Kyle Hamilton after this rep versus undrafted free agent Bailey Gaither. It looks to me like Kyle Hamilton is expecting a shorter outbreaking route and his initial steps move to wall that off. But Bailey Gaither is taking this upfield and Kyle Hamilton has to drive off that back foot and stay on top of this route. At this point in the rep, I don't think Kyle Hamilton is as physical with his teammate as he is with opponents during an actual game. And so without that benefit, Bailey Gaither beats him in the foot race. You know, he's properly cooked. But shockingly, this one rep didn't necessarily indicate how he would play his rookie season because the reality of the situation, despite all the worry and criticism on Twitter, is that Kyle Hamilton was one of the best slot players in the league his first season. And a big reason for that has nothing to do with coverage at all. It's the run support. Uh, unsurprisingly, the six foot four, 220 pound defensive back with 33 inch arms is more effective in this area than your typical slot corner. Here he's got one eye on the receiver, one eye on the mesh point of the handoff, and he is able to hold off the blocker with his length. He reads the handoff, he reads that this is bouncing outside, and from there he is very quickly able to shed his blocker, close, and get in on the tackle. We're talking about a nickel who is comfortable lowering his shoulder and taking on guards and winning at the point of attack before making the tackle on Najee Harris here. So, as you can probably imagine, wide receivers find it very difficult to block him, whether they be inserting into the scheme or making a block out on the perimeter, as DJ Moore finds out right here. And the other thing that makes Kyle Hamilton such a force versus the run or versus these kind of manufactured screen touches is his trigger, and the combination of all these traits can just be overwhelming at times. Another example of that quick trigger here he's aligned off over Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus turns towards Ritter immediately, indicating a screen, and Kyle Hamilton wastes no time. He cannot react to this much faster. It's one step and he's already driving. He takes a quick look at Ritter to confirm this actually is a screen. There is no decoy here and he is flying downhill. He beats the blocker there, wraps Zacchaeus up by his legs. Zacchaeus is able to get away, but if Kyle Hamilton made the tackle here, Zacchaeus would go down at what? Around the 16 yard line? He's able to throw Zacchaeus backwards and delay him so the pursuit can recover and Zacchaeus ends up going down anyway, in large part due to Kyle Hamilton's effort. But on the stat sheet, this probably only goes down as a missed tackle for Hamilton in the negative, even though I think it's a great play. Here's another situation where you've got blockers out on the perimeter setting up the screen for Chase, and Kyle Hamilton is able to just completely blow this up along with Roquan Smith with that closeout ability. And he's also a sure tackler. And... He's a big safety that works near the line of scrimmage, but he's not a hard hitter. He's not as physical as like a Derwin James. When he goes to tackle someone, he's not looking to lower the shoulder and make a big hit. He's looking to use his long arms to ensnare ball carriers, wrap them up, and bring them down, which has a high rate of success, but also does allow them to fall forward a good amount of the time. That's an idea worth expanding upon. Kyle Hamilton is more physical than the average defensive back just because of his sheer size and role, but he is nowhere close to the Cam Chancellor or Derwin levels of aggressor in the box. Like, as a tackler and as someone who takes on contact, like here, Chris Lindstrom is going to build the combo and then peel off of it and block Hamilton. And Hamilton does a decent job here. He's able to hold him off get eyes on the running back and make the tackle when the running back runs by him. But I think a guy of Hamilton's size and strength versus a guy like Chris Lindstrom, who is a smaller, more agile guard, I think there are some safeties over the course of history of his archetype that would really be, they wouldn't concede so much ground here, I think I should say, and they wouldn't be content to maybe just kind of ride this out, moving backwards and then disengaging when the running back goes past because it's a good tackle, but the running back also makes a nice gain. Whereas if he really lowered the shoulder and put some pop in Lindstrom's pads here, it would constrict the space for the runner to work with and it could be a shorter gain. Like he's not an A plus aggressive physical safety. I think Ultimately, what Kyle Hamilton wants to be doing is keeping eyes in the backfield and reading everything out. And if he were to lower the pad level and really pop a guard, it would require him to stop that for at least a split second. And I don't think he wants to do it. So stylistically, that's just the way he plays. He's a bit cautious. He's careful. He's reading things out. He's not 
in this scenario seeing, oh, there's an uncovered guard climbing at me. I'm going to fly forward and build a wall, right? He's reading things out, reading things out, reading things out. And because he's not being aggressive, the guard gets ahead of steam and is able to kind of wipe him out of the play on this specific instance. But this isn't something I'm particularly worried about because he's still far more physical than the average defensive back and even the average safety. It's just maybe not at an elite, elite level. But when he's playing with 100% confidence in what he's doing and he's seen it and he's flying downhill, not much is getting in his way. Like he still packs a punch in those situations. And I could see a world where with more time in the league, he sees everything a million times. He's more confident all the time. And those situations where he's flying downhill and hitting people happen more often. And I could see him gaining that physicality as time goes on and as he gets more comfortable in the defense. Uh, I, I just don't think stylistically, even though he's this big underneath safety, he's, he's not going to be a Cam Chancellor, Derwin James type of thumper. Anyway, moving on. The other benefit of keeping Kyle Hamilton close to the line of scrimmage is he is a very effective blitzer. Uh, he can usually get a pretty good jump on the football. He's got these long strides that eat up a lot of ground quickly. He's got decent bend for a safety of his size. Like he can flatten to the quarterback pretty good. And he's got such long arms that if the quarterback's bringing the ball back to throw anywhere within his vicinity, he can you know reach out his hand and knock it away at a longer distance than other guys can. And one of the most appealing things about blitzing Kyle Hamilton is even if it doesn't get home, it is very, very, very difficult to throw either over or around him. And he's got very quick reaction time. When the quarterback cocks back to throw the football, he springs into action and it is quite the obstacle right here Desmond Ritter has to put a lot of loft on this thing and ends up overshooting his target in the flat this isn't so much of a blitz as it is just coming up to play the run versus play action and then when that happens McSorley is going to throw it behind Hamilton in the space he just vacated because there's a big slant route going in there but Kyle Hamilton is able to jump up and not only get a lot of height but also track the football which is to his right it's like right about there He's able to track the football and adjust to it. You can see his left hand move into the passing lane. He's able to get a fingertip on it, bat it up in the air, and potentially save a touchdown. This all to say, every single team in the league employs a guy who comes in on nickel alignments to play the slot. And usually these are corners. Kyle Hamilton was able to come in and be the most impactful slot guy in and around the box in the entire league. And if not the most, one of the most and it's an important part of playing that nickel position it's not just coverage you're close to the box you have to get your hands dirty and to have a guy who's basically an extra linebacker on the field with these kinds of instincts and size and coverage ability which we'll get into is crucial so let's talk about his downfield coverage coming out of notre dame the big knock on him was a perceived lack of change of direction ability stiffness in his game he's not going to be able to go up against quick slot corners and play man coverage Yet here he is in the league being asked to do that a decent amount, a lot. And here you start to see those weaknesses crop up against Tyler Boyd. Boyd is going to stem this route outside. Hamilton is going to shuffle that way. And then Boyd sinks his hips, drives off that outside foot, and goes inside. And I can't lie, Kyle Hamilton looks a bit sluggish changing directions here. There's not much burst as he tries to match Tyler Boyd's break. You know, he doesn't look light on his feet here at all. They look heavy, and Tyler Boyd is able to bring this to the one-yard line. Here, he's in man against the Steelers slot wide receiver, Sims, and Sims hits him with a stutter step that catches Hamilton a bit flat-footed. Then Sims is able to get by him here. But Kyle Hamilton is still in a decent trail position here as long as he plays the technique correctly. The problem is he doesn't. He's supposed to be reading the hips of the wide receiver here. Instead, he's reading the eyes. Sims is looking, I don't know if you can see it. You can see the logo, the white dot on his helmet here. He's looking back at the quarterback. Kyle Hamilton has to ignore this and look at his lower body. The hips don't lie, but he thinks a pass might be coming. He thinks Sims might be looking for the ball and Hamilton turns his head to look as well. Now, when Sims is looking at the quarterback, his hips and his legs are still going upfield. So Hamilton can't relax here. When Hamilton turns around, Sims breaks this outside and creates yards of separation. But that last rep, that was more of an issue with how he played the route than an issue with his overall athleticism. And honestly, even though there are times where I look at him and say maybe 
other guys would have played this a little better. Or some guys would have turned a little sharper here, been a little bit twitchier. He's not bad in this area to me. Like, I, I think the concerns were always pretty overblown. Like, here he's going up against Sims again, and Sims is going to break outside and then turn really quickly back inside. And most Kyle Hamilton haters before the draft would tell you he could not defend this route against an NFL player in man coverage in the slot. But yet here he is against a good route doing it absolutely perfectly. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. 82 stutters a bit again, breaks this outside. Kyle Hamilton is ready for that. You can see him plant off that inside foot and stay on top of this thing. And then 82 whips around and Kyle Hamilton is right there with him, right? Flipping his hips, accelerating. I mean, there's nowhere to go with this football. I think you get a good look at his twitchiness in this rep versus Deontay Johnson. Man coverage against one of the best route runners in the league, and I think he holds his own. Deontay Johnson gets a little bit of separation, but I'll explain why I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing for Hamilton. Hamilton doesn't bite on the little stutter step that Johnson takes on the release right here. He's patient. He doesn't shift his weight. He keeps it in his back pedal, and he's ready for this route when it declares vertically. He flips his hips, runs with Johnson, and it's a really nice route from Johnson. He leans into Hamilton, then breaks it outside real fast. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. And yes, there is a bit of separation here. If this was a perfectly timed and placed throw, this could probably get completed. But I watch Hamilton here. And I mean, how much faster can you really expect him to turn? Like how much tighter can you really expect him to be on Deontay Johnson here? I mean, maybe the best corners in the league, the Jair's of the world could stick closer to Johnson than Hamilton here. But he takes one step really let's see let's wind it back so right here johnson turns out and hamilton takes one step right here to gather himself and then he's back following johnson and he's so long and he's so good at diving in front of footballs that i honestly think he could make a play on this if it were to be thrown right here so unless you expect kyle hamilton to be some superhero who is reactive to Deontay Johnson who knows where he's going and also way bigger than this receiver if you expect him in those situations to be like just as sharp turning as Johnson like I just don't know what to tell you you are looking for literally the perfect football player that probably has never existed um, I think Kyle Hamilton's change of direction ability seems pretty acceptable for me especially when you consider everything he does in the run game and in the screen game and in and around the line of scrimmage like his man coverage is not nearly bad enough to counteract all the good he does and there are a couple haters out there i would say who would tell you you know that it it he can't do anything like this here's another man coverage rep versus boyd very similar to the rep versus sims i showed a couple plays earlier boyd breaks this outside and then he's gonna snap around and work back inside. And to hear some people talk about Hamilton, you'd expect him faced with this change of direction to just go flying out of the picture because he can't adjust. But instead, he's actually sticking right with Boyd. His footwork looks the exact same. He's running this route for Boyd. He turns just as quickly as Boyd does and is able to lock this up. So is change of direction ability a real strength for him? No. But does it make him any kind of liability out there? Also, definitely not. Here's a statistical look at how he stacks up versus other corners in the NFC North. I took all of their coverage snaps when they were lined up at left, right, or slot corner. Hamilton posted the fourth best mark of this group in yards allowed per coverage snap and the sixth best mark of this group in terms of target rate. And I think he's got a lot of talent as a zone defender as well. Here he lets Tyler Boyd cross his face. He doesn't get distracted by this route. He knows where it's going. He knows he has inside help in Roquan Smith to take this. Then he gets eyes over to T. Higgins, sees that he's running a dig. And it's not the craziest break on the ball here or break on the route, I should say. And maybe T. Higgins has a bit of separation. But again, I think Kyle Hamilton has read this out well enough that he would put himself in a position to at least contest this catch had it have been thrown, but luckily the pass rush gets home and he doesn't need to find out. Here you've got a cover three look with 41 bailing into the deep third, middle of the field player, deep third, and that puts Kyle Hamilton's responsibility into the flat. And he's reading the running back and he's reading Boyd and neither of these two go into the flat. Boyd releases vertically and immediately you see Mixon running play action. So that means he's probably not coming this way. So 
Hamilton diagnoses that there's not really going to be any threats right here. So what does he do? He gets eyes on Chase to undercut his go route. And sure enough, it is a curl that would have no chance of being completed because Kyle Hamilton got right to the spot he needed to be at and took it away. Maybe there were a couple missed assignments here or there, but all that really tells me is he's a rookie in a very complicated defense. Like, I think that it's clear that he's very smart and has a good sense of routes developing. He's also got a really smooth backpedal, not only for a guy his size, but just for anybody. Gets into it, no problem. Sims is threatening vertically. Hamilton flips his hips and then Sims settles down, but Hamilton is able to stop on a dime and take this away. And those are all the plays I have to show you. So to summarize, Kyle Hamilton was an impact player year one, and he has a very high ceiling as that big nickel safety. I mean, already, if you could vote for just nickel player, slot player in a Pro Bowl, Kyle Hamilton should get plenty of votes as a Pro Bowler year one. And I still think he has plenty of room to get better. So even though he's kind of limited in certain ways, he still fills a very important role in that defense. Uh, one that somebody has to play, it might as well be Kyle Hamilton. And I think going forward, he is going to be well worth where the Ravens selected him, even though he's in that nickel spot that doesn't get as much respect as some of the other positions in football. So I'm, I'm a big fan of him. Obviously, I was a big fan of him coming out of college. I think I made a video on this account that he should be like the first overall pick and he was the most talented prospect in the draft. And, you know, he was really good in a specific role. It wasn't edge rusher. It wasn't outside corner like Sauce Gardner, but it was it was really good. It was just a little a little bit more of a limited role than we'd like to see as a collective fan base of the sport. So those are my general thoughts on Kyle Hamilton. I think it was uh, a stellar year one performance, like I've said a million times by now. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to Stay Hot on YouTube if you haven't and everywhere. I'm talking Instagram. I'm talking TikTok. I'm talking Twitter if you haven't in those places. And I will see you next week with another film review.